Cantor started by assuming he could perfectly map these sets to each other one to one. So he imagined writing down an infinite list, with a natural number on one side and a real number between zero and one on the other. Since there is no smallest real number, he would just write them down in any order. Assuming he now has a complete infinite list, Cantor writes down another real number. And to do it, he takes the first digit of the first number and adds one. Then the second digit of the second number, and again, he adds one. He keeps doing this all the way down the list. If the digit is an eight or a nine, he subtracts one instead of adding to avoid duplicates. And by the end of this process, he has written down a real number between zero and one. But that number doesn't appear anywhere in his list. It's different from the first number in the first decimal place, different from the second number in the second decimal place, and so on down the line. It has to be different from every number on the list by at least one digit, the digit on the diagonal. That's why this is called Cantor's diagonalization proof.